Gentleman from North Carolina is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the chairman uh, for his kindness and in, uh, in working uh, with uh, me and my team on, on bringing this bill to the floor today, and I want to thank his staff as well. Um, what we have today is uh, the Protecting Consumers Access to Credit Act, a bipartisan piece of legislation that we have both Republicans and the Democrats in the Senate uh, in support of, as well as uh, Democrats and Republicans here in the House of Representatives uh, supportive of. The issue we're dealing with is uh, one of the biggest challenges facing our country, which is the decline of lending to consumers and small businesses in small uh, towns and rural, ta rural communities like the ones I represent in Western North Carolina. It's the same issue for fa uh, facing uh, so many in urban settings as well. This touches all of America. But the story in rural America is bleak. Community banks are closing at a rapid pace and small businesses are struggling to find loans. Many Americans don't have the savings to cover a common $1,000 emergency like a car repair. That's not just a rural issue, that touches all American communities. The good news is after the financial crisis, innovative companies and banks partnered together to find new ways to help hardworking Americans and small business owners. They call it FinTech. Uh, these innovative companies uh, partner with banks to help small businesses get a loan. They help young people get out of student debt. They help everyday Americans find the financing they need to lead better lives. Now, this should be something heralded by both parties. It shouldn't be a partisan issue. It shouldn't be a left or right, conservative or liberal. It's a good thing that is happening with innovation and different modes of lending and borrowing in this country. And while this era of financial innovation is brand new, the actual structure supporting FinTech is based on one of the oldest bedrock principles in American law. The fundamental concept is called valid when made. Valid when made, or what the Supreme Court referred to in 1833 as, quote, the cardinal rule, end quote, of American interest rate laws, provides the legal foundation for how fintech companies partner with banks. Well, I don't have to share with a ranking member or other members of, of our chamber that banks are heavily regulated. And if they even partner with another firm, that too is a regulated thing. Yet all that changed when the Supreme Court declined to hear the case of Madden versus Midland funding. In Madden, activist judges on a federal appeals court broke with a long-standing legal precedent of valid when made, and instead held that the 1864 National Bank Act did not have a preemptive effect on loans created under this FinTech bank partnership. Now, the legal framework has been around almost for 200 years, and the particular law that we're dealing with has been around for 150 years, roughly speaking. The decision, though, uh, this decision has created uncertainty for fintech companies, financial institutions, and credit markets generally. According to a study from Columbia and Stanford University, uh, Universities, Madden significantly reduced credit availability in that affected region. And uh, this matters for all Americans because of the effect it's having. Uh, what we saw is loan volumes decline. And the average FICO score for borrowers to get a loan increased. That means that if you're on the margins of society, it got harder and more expensive for you to get lending. So it's a bad case. Simply put, this should not be happening. And if we're serious about financial inclusion for all Americans, we need this bill today, a bipartisan bill. We need it. And if we're serious about modernizing our financial system, we need this bill passed into law. And if we are serious about helping everyday Americans, not just the fortunate few with unblemished credit, we need to pass this bill. I'm pleased this legislation enjoys support from my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. I want to thank Representative Meeks, Democrat of New York, Senator Mark Warner, Democrat of Virginia, and Senator Pat Toomey, Republican of Pennsylvania, who worked hard on this bipartisan, bicameral legislation. It's important, it's needed, it will have a positive impact on people's lives. All arguments uh, that have been made about this uh, bill, against this bill on the floor, uh, 
don't actually focus on what is important and necessary about this legislation. They're straw men that don't have anything to do with the contents of this very simple bipartisan piece of legislation. I ask my colleagues to vote for this, um, and I yield back the balance of my time.